What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. It is Heart to Heart DFS and today we have another NBA slate breakdown for DraftKings. If you're new to the channel, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Also hit the notification bell. It does really help out my channel and I do greatly appreciate it. We are well on our way to 500 subscribers by the end of the NBA playoffs, which is the goal. So if you could, you know, definitely subscribe if you're new. I'd greatly, greatly be appreciated. Uh, before we get into it, Make sure to follow me on Twitter at HeartDFS, trying to get to 200 followers there. Uh, hopefully by next weekend, that'd be that'd be huge. Let's see if we can do that. So make sure to follow me there at HeartDFS, answering any questions you guys might have, throwing all you know, throwing around prize pick plays, stuff like that. And we have a nice three gamer for today. Before we get into it, just want to look over my lineup from last night. Played in the four dollar, you know, tournament. Double my money, so nothing huge. Decided to go with Van Fleet. Really talked about how they're going to drive their starters into the ground when it came to minutes. Van Fleet got 15 points in the first quarter and then didn't manage to get another point until I think it was midway through the fourth. So he got 46 fantasy points, but that should have been a lot higher. Jalen Brunson had a great game. Told him, told you guys in my other video from yesterday, my analysis video, how I really like Jalen Brunson over Dinwiddie just because he's a better offensive player all around. 41 points, career game was huge. Royce O'Neal, I talked about in my video how one every 10 games, he's going to have, you know, a pretty good game and get you close to the 30 fantasy point mark, if not a little bit more. That's what he did. Kleber talked about how he's a great three-point shooter and a better shooter than Powell. 22% owned, got you 41. Eight threes, huge. Jokic, another blowout for Jokic. Low owned Jokic, or relatively low owned in this tournament, Jokic, blowout. Barely season. Yeah, I think he saw three minutes in the fourth because it was already a blowout, and then he got ejected. So, Donovan Mitchell, 45, which is not bad. Talked about how his price is way too cheap, but didn't really get any peripheral stats until the third quarter, had halfway through it. I think that's when he got like his first rebound and assist. So, that didn't really help out there, but he did okay. And then, just with paint up to Jokic, I had to throw in, you know, three guys under 4K, or yeah, three guys under 4K. Two of them worked out. Uh, one of them didn't. Dad Young. Obviously, that was just a super risky play. I decided to go there, you know, hoping those. Once he got ruled in, I was hoping, you know, Gary Trent wouldn't play. And so they'd need, you know, his veteran experience off the bench. It's just not true. They're just not playing him. I don't know why. And then Otto Porter Jr., the game blew out. So they didn't need him at all. And he didn't get there. So just a little unfortunate. But, you know, didn't make my money back. So I'm not complaining. Uh, yeah, let's get into the three games for today. We have the Hawks Heat. First game blew out, so that's going to be great to watch this terrible game. 7.5 point spread, 219 over under. Timberwolves Grizzlies, 6.5 point spread, 240 over under. And then Pelicans Suns, 9.5 point spread, 221.5 over under. So, a few games with blowout risk today. I'm sure at least one, if not two, of these games will blow out. And kind of ruin any props I pick because that's how it's been going. Just barely been losing those. It's super annoying. But let's get into the breakdown. This is be a, a lot quicker, more of a quick one compared to the past. I think moving forward for the playoffs, I'm gonna have my longer analysis videos go out like the night before, and then the day of, I'm gonna have these like quick pick videos where I'm just gonna go over my core who you guys should target, you know, very quickly, just to be able to, you guys to be able to watch it very quickly, get through the video, and then my NBA prize pick video as well. So I think it's going to be a, kind of like a three series or three video uh, thing for the day. So first off, we got Atlanta, Miami. This game obviously blew out, so none of these guys on Atlanta got there, but still really like Trey, even though it's, you know, a tough spot against Miami and their defense and how they are guarding Trey, but I still really like him just because he's the whole, whole offense. And yeah, that's basically all you really need to know is Trey's the whole offense. I really like him. Clint Capella is out still. Bogdan is questionable, but should play. Do really like him at 5,300. Good sixth man off the bench. You know, he can get you into the 40 fancy point range if he's having a good game. You know, more realistically, he's around 35-ish, but that's more than enough at 5,300. John Collins is back. Played 21 minutes. And if he plays, you know, 20 to 25, he's not really viable. But... If he plays, you know, close to 30, I would say that it's worth taking a shot on him at 5,100. 
he's a pretty good player he, you know he can get you a double double in that amount of time so wouldn't mind it but if he's only playing 25 or less i want to get there but he does affect the minutes of gallinari herder and hunter a little bit hunter will play the most out of those uh three just because he's a good defensive player can shoot the ball a little bit he's been shooting the ball well the past four games uh, you know, not the highest ceiling guy, but I don't mind him at 4,400. Hurt is just too a little, a little too scoring dependent for me, losing some of the minutes. Gallinari is, they're going to need his scoring in this series, so I expect him to get at least 30 minutes each game if he's hitting the shot. If he's not, I'd expect it to, you know, be around 25 to 20. And then maybe they'd play Herder if he's hitting the shots. So, I, I mean, own, the ownership, it's going to go to Gallinari out of these three, but I do prefer Hunter just because he's going to play more minutes due to defense. And John Collins kind of takes away from Gallinari, and then they'll just rest Herder a little bit more if he's not hitting his shots. DeLon Wright is getting some minutes, but don't think he need to go there. Favorite plays on the side are obviously Trey Young, Bogdan, Collins if he gets some minutes, but we'll have to wait for news. Don't think he will. Okungu, you can take a shot on him. He's just super foul prone, as you can see. Four, four, five, five, four. Not the best matchup against Bam, who's pretty quick and athletic for a big. So if you want to take a throw up dart throw on him, you can. And then I'd prefer Hunter over the, the three other guys, you know, Hurt, Hunter, Hurt, or Gaonari, but do like Gaonari for score and ability, which they'll need in the series. Miami side, Jimmy Butler, 8,400. Do really like him. You know, should see him around 40 minutes if the game's close. So that's he's a good point per minute guy. Don't mind him. Really like Bam in this buyback opportunity. Play terrible. Uh, let's see. 23 fancy points. Only got six points. You know, six rebounds, five assists, 28 minutes. Only shot the ball five times. I do expect to see Bam get back to his original mark of around, you know, 40 fancy points in the season, if not more. You know, it's a great matchup against the Hawks. He should be able to do well. So I really like this buyback opportunity for him. But knowing my luck, this game will blow out and it will be irrelevant. So, oh well. Hero, really like him at 6,600. You know, great guy off the bench. Lowry, I don't mind him at, you know, 6,300. He has that playoff experience. He's kind of like a Harden where he's not going to shoot the ball a ton, but still can get you there just with his assist ability and if he's hitting a few of his shots. And he's, you know, not afraid to get to the free throw line. Uh, you know, seven, six, sometimes he won't, but. I don't mind him here in this spot at 6,300 against the Hawks. You know, Trey Young is terrible at defense, so Lowry should be able to do whatever he wants, uh, and, you know, against Trey Young. So it's a good target against Trey Young at 6,300. It's just he doesn't shoot the ball a ton, so that's kind of limiting his upside. Victor didn't play. Duncan Robinson is just too score independent for me. Got 27 points, but only 32 fancy points. Don't think he had to go there. Struce, I, you know, I would take a shot on him at 4,100, but it's one of those things, if he's playing well, that means, means Miami as a whole is most likely playing well, and then it would be a lot more risky of a blowout, so I don't know if I'd get to Struz 4,100. P.J. Tucker is questionable. Um, I'm assuming he plays, but I want to get there at 3,900. Kind of had like a ceiling game last game. It's mostly just Bam, Jimmy, Tyler, and Kyle Lowry for the Miami plays. Memphis side, we have... Towns at the top, 9-5. Really like him against, uh, what's his name, Steven Adams. As you saw last game, Towns did really well. 43 minutes, 29 points, 13 rebounds, 3 assists, a block. So, you know, same matchup, obviously, because it's a series. I'd say he's like a B-plus play for me. Don't know if I'll get there, but I do like him in this matchup. Anthony Edwards has been playing amazing. 37 minutes, 40 minutes. 30 points, 36 points. I just, it's one of those, his price is kind of up there, but I don't mind him in the spot. He's been playing extremely well for his first playoff uh, starts. And yeah, just really, 8,200 for him is kind of high pricey, but I don't mind it. He's been playing well. You know, maybe you ride the hot streak. I think I might fade just because he might come back down to earth and D'Lo might be playing a little bit better. Only made two of 11 shots, but still got you 28 fancy points. 10 points, 9 assists, 3 rebounds. He's averaging about seven assists a game, so he wasn't shooting the ball more. Kind of got, you know, two more assists than usual, but if he's hitting his shots, you know, he can get you close to the 50s, if not a little bit more with the ceiling, but I don't mind him at 7,100. He will probably be very low-owned uh, versus Towns and Edwards, which, you know, maybe you go there for the ownership. Pat Bev, decent play. He's getting around 30 minutes a game. 
not shooting the ball a ton, but he will get you those rebounds, assists, maybe a block or steal. So 5,600 isn't a terrible price to pay for him. I just know, don't know if it's, you know, the best play to go to. Beasley's worth taking a shot on, as I always mentioned. 28 minutes and then 30. If he's hitting the shots, he's going to get the minutes, but he's one of those guys where it's either he's very hot or he's very cold. And so you can see, you know, games like versus Chicago, 16 minutes, only 11 fantasy points, 8 points in real life. So just more of that dart throw. The guy I do like is McDaniels, played 25 minutes off the bench, 22 minutes before that. He's kind of a do-it-everything guy, you know, can hit shots, can rebound, can assist, block, steal. Kind of that defensive-minded first player. He's like uh, Herb Jones, basically. They can do a little bit of everything, so I do like him at 4000 for a nice value play. That really does it for me on this side. You know, you could take a shot in Vanderbilt, hope he gets you a double-double, but usually he's kind of stuck below 20 fancy points. Memphis side, love Ja at the top. Motor of this team, like Trey Young, so I th really think it's, you know, you have to play those guys, or at least one of them, just because they do everything for the team, and if the team's doing well and they're winning, it's most likely due to them. Jaron Jackson Jr., not for me. You know, his price is decent. It's just... Kind of seems like he's always floating around 33 to 35 fancy points. I just don't think I get there at 6,500, even though it's a good matchup against the Timberwolves. Desmond Bain, I would take a shot on him, but he's kind of losing some of his upside due to Dylan Brooks being back and shooting the ball more. Uh, as you can see, you know, 16 times, 14 times. Bain's only gone the past two games of 7 and then 15. So it's kind of give it or take. I think Brooks will have more ownership just because he's 200 bucks cheaper and Bain hasn't been hitting this season recently, but I don't mind taking a shot on Bain. Steven Adams, not for me. He can't have he can't flash that upside, you know, every few games, but I just don't like the matchup versus Towns. Tyson Melton both were limited to around like 15 minutes. Don't think you have to get there. Same with Kyle Anderson, about 20 minutes. Brandon Clark did get a double-double off bench, played 27 minutes. I think you can kind of expect closer to 20. But if he's doing well, he will get extended a little bit. So I don't mind taking a shot on him at 4400 for a little relief of salary. Pelican side, this game started out as a blowout at half. It was like a 19-point lead for the Suns. But it's a 9.5 point spread, so there's that risk once again. But I do really like CJ in the spot, 8100 Way too cheap for a guy who is shooting the ball 25 times a game, playing over 40 minutes. I just don't see how you don't get to CJ in this spot unless it blows out. I, I like Brandon Ingram, but as you can see, there's just times where, like for the Phoenix game, the first game, if you didn't see it, I watched a little bit. Of, I watched about 10 minutes of the second half. Uh, they were double teaming Brandon Ingram for some reason. I don't think CJ was in there, but even when he came back in, they started double teaming Brandon Ingram and he had to throw it throw it out. So 7,900, I, I would rather get to Valanciunas at 7,500. Had a monster game rebounding, 18 and 25. Obviously, that's you know way above his average of 11 and 0.6 a game. But I don't mind getting into Valanciunas over Ingram. CJ's my favorite play. Larry Nance came off the bench once again, once again, and had a good game. 20 minutes, 14 points, six rebounds, three assists. He's just kind of the the energy glue guy, glue guy off the bench now. Been two back to back very good games for him, so I don't mind getting back to him. I really like Herb Jones. Playing over 30 minutes, you know, he doesn't shoot the ball a ton. If he's not hitting his shots, he's not going to get you there fantasy point-wise, but he's one of those guys who can get you steals, some blocks, assists, rebounds. So I do expect a little bit better of a game from Herb in the spot at 4,300. I think people will be off of him, so I don't mind throwing him in the core for today. Because even if this game does blow out, you know, Herb will most likely see some minutes in that blowout. But it's one of those things you can't project a blowout or hope for it just because it usually doesn't happen. It kind of goes the opposite of what you're thinking. But I don't mind him. Alvarado not getting enough minutes. Trey Murphy's getting the minutes, but doesn't do anything offensively or defensively, so not worth it. Just kind of the, the main three on the side, and that's it. Phoenix side, love Booker, 8,800, but I prefer Chris Paul, 8,300. As I said in my last video, had a monster game. The only thing about Chris Paul is sometimes he doesn't shoot the ball. You now, maybe it's a playoff, so maybe he'll shoot a little bit more, but... Sometimes he just defers to passing the ball, which I don't really understand, as he can still take over in the mid-range. But do really like him at 8,300 still. Uh, Aiton, okay play for me. You know, got there just because of his four blocks, but I just don't really like the price on him against J-Val. Mikael Bridges, don't mind him at 5K. 
should see close to 40 minutes. Not going to shoot the ball a ton with the main guy's back, but he can have those uh, flashing upside games into the 30s. Fancy point range, which would really be beneficial at 5K for him. No for McGee, Cam Johnson, just a little too scoring dependent coming off the bench for me to get there at 4,400, but I don't mind him as one of those guys. There's a bunch, there's like six, seven guys at 4,400 that a lot of people are going to be playing for salary relief. And I don't mind him because he'll be one of the lower owned guys compared to the others, but I think I'd rather get to Jay Crowder. Going to see 30 minutes or more if he's playing well with his shot. Obviously, last game was terrible. A lot of people got burned. I don't think a lot of people are going to go back to him. That's why I really like him in this spot. So don't mind to get into Jay Crowder as one of those guys under at 4,400. That really does it for me on this side. Um, that's pretty much the slate breakdown for today. This is the direction I'm going. Uh, ja, CJ, McDaniels, Herb, Chris Paul, and Bam. It leaves you 4,000 to play with for center or forward spot. So let's see if you wanted to use this lineup, which I don't think you should, but you can definitely throw in a guy like Struess, and then at center you'd have to play what? Jackson Hayes or Tory Craig, which is kind of gross. So obviously you'd probably want to pay down at one of these spots. So you wouldn't have to get to Struess or Tory Craig. But this is kind of the direction I'm heading for my core. If you're new to the channel, please like, subscribe, comment. I do appreciate all the support recently. And I will be later, back later today for an NBA Prize Fix video. See you guys.